Testament sources are much closer to the time of the original writings than are the other major works of antiquity. Plus, the internal consistency in the New Testament documents has an amazing accuracy, about 99.5% pure, unrivaled in all of history. As a result, the New Testament manuscripts far outweigh the others in quantity, accuracy, and reliability. Evidence like this has caused renowned Bible scholar F. F. Bruce to declare, There is no body of ancient literature in the world which enjoys such a wealth of good textual attestation as the New Testament. And Ravi Zacharias wrote, In real terms, the New Testament is easily the best attested ancient writing in terms of the sheer number of documents, the time span between the events and the document, and the variety of documents available to sustain or contradict it. There is nothing in ancient manuscript evidence to match such textual availability and integrity. Looking at all the evidence, let us consider, if the critics of the Bible dismiss the New Testament as unreliable, shouldn't they also dismiss the reliability of the writings of Plato, Aristotle, Caesar, Homer, and the other authors mentioned in these findings? Similarly, if critics acknowledge the historicity and writings of those other individuals, then shouldn't they retain the historicity and writings of the New Testament authors? After all, the evidence for the New Testament's reliability is far greater. These investigations show that the Christian documents have substantially superior evidence for affirming its accuracy than any other ancient writing known to man. An example where Bible prophecy predicts and matches world history exactly is found in Daniel chapter 2, where Daniel interprets a dream for King Nebuchadnezzar. Study of this prophecy shows that the Bible predicted the rise and fall of world empires, starting with the Babylonian Empire in 600 BC. This prophecy outlines these kingdoms, covering 2,500 years of history, from 600 BC to our modern day of divided European nations. History and politics have matched this prediction perfectly, as history books attest to this rule and sequence of world powers. This is an amazing prophecy that helps show the accuracy and divine inspiration of the Bible. For a closer look at this prophecy, you can view the video Prophecy Number 1, Our Day in Prophecy. This prophecy of Daniel also ends with the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is presented in another video as well, which you can see. Jesus said many unusual and greater-than-life statements, such as John 14.11. He says, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. John 14.9 He who has seen me has seen the Father. I am the light of the world. Without me you can do nothing. I am not of this world. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. I am. What was Jesus saying? Was he crazy? Another important statement of his is John 14.6. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus made several statements like this of his extraordinary significance, very bold claims. If Jesus was lying, then he could not even be called a good man, but he would be an imposter and a fraud. Based on many statements like these, either the Bible record is true and Jesus is who he says he is, that he's the divine Son of God, the only Savior of the world, or he is a liar, a deceiver, or crazy. Are there any other options? Who do you say he is? Dating the Gospels is very important especially considering the evidence that the Gospels were written by the disciples of Jesus himself. If the Gospels were written early, say before the year 70 AD, about 40 years after Jesus' death, then not much time was available for myth to creep into the Gospel accounts, since it was the eyewitnesses who wrote them. Thus we can take the Gospels with greater accuracy and reliability. 
An important point is that none of the four gospel accounts mention the destruction of the Jewish temple in A.D. 70. This is extremely significant because during his ministry, about 40 years in advance, Jesus prophesied about the temple's destruction. The prophecy was fulfilled in A.D. 70 when the Romans sacked Jerusalem and burned the temple. Such an obvious fulfillment of Jesus' prophecy would probably have been recorded by any of the four gospel writers if they were writing after the event, after A.D. 70, as this would strengthen the claims of Jesus. But this important event of the destruction of the Jerusalem was not included, indicating that the gospels were written before A.D. 70. Further, early church leader Ignatius who was a student of the Apostle John, gives us an early reference to the Gospel of Matthew. Ignatius died around 115 AD, but in his writings he quoted from the Gospel of Matthew. So Matthew had to be in circulation before then, and it is generally believed that the Gospel of Matthew was written before AD 70 and as early as AD 50. Also of note is the New Testament Book of Acts. Acts ends abruptly with Paul in prison, awaiting trial. A likely explanation is that Luke wrote the book of Acts during this time, before Paul finally appeared before Nero. This would be about A.D. 62 or 63. This means that Acts and Luke were written within 30 years of the ministry and death of Jesus Christ. Many thousands of quotations from writings of the early church fathers, the early Christian leaders, are found outside the Bible. These sources give enormous witness to the New Testament text we have today. These church fathers followed after the apostles and gave leadership to the new church, such as Clement of Rome. Clement of Rome was martyred in 100 AD. In his writings, he quoted from the New Testament books Matthew, Mark, Luke, Acts, 1 Corinthians, 1 Peter, Hebrews, and Titus. Clement's quotes completely correspond with the Bible we read today. Again, this is a first century source. There are many other early church fathers and leaders which give us writings in support of the New Testament. From this large source of early Christian writings, there are over 36,000 preserved references from the New Testament. Some examples from the early church fathers are the Epistle of Polycarp to the Philippians, dated 120 AD. Polycarp was a personal acquaintance of John the Apostle. He quotes from the Gospels, Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Hebrews, 1st Peter, and 1st John. Letters of Ignatius dated 115 AD. He wrote to several churches in Asia Minor, and Ignatius quotes from Matthew, John, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, 1st and 2nd Timothy, and Titus. And the Epistle of Clement to the Corinthians, dated 95 AD. This letter was written to encourage the church to respect their elders. He quotes from the Gospels, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, Ephesians, Titus, Hebrews, and 1 Peter. Further documentation for the New Testament we have today exists from additional early sources in Asia Minor. These include evidences that the Gospel spread into Egypt, Palestine, Italy, Gaul, and North Africa. Additional documentation is from early Church Fathers such as Clement of Rome, Ignatius, Polycarp, Justin the Martyr, Irenaeus, and many others. All of this evidence of early church writings corresponds to the New Testament we have today and shows us that even if we lost all of the 5,000 plus early Greek manuscripts, if we lost all of the thousands of Latin Vulgates, and even all the thousands of other ancient manuscripts, we would still be able to reconstruct all but 11 verses of the New Testament from the